Hello and welcome back to the HIVRNATestGuide.com YouTube channel, your trusted source for HIV testing with over 4,500 HIV testing labs across the United States. For more information, check the link in the description of this video or the bio section of our channel. Welcome to the deep dive. Today we are taking a, uh, a really fascinating trip into what might just be the future of personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a powerful collaboration between two of the most, I mean, truly disruptive technologies of our time, mRNA and CAR-T cell therapy. Right. Our focus is on how this pairing is being studied, like right now, as a potential path to an HIV cure. Yeah. Moving beyond, you know, decades of incredible success with suppression toward actually eliminating the virus. And that's really the mission for us today, to unpack that scientific synergy. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably know mRNA from the COVID vaccines. It's basically about delivering temporary instructions to your cells. Right, the instruction manual. Exactly, and CAR-RT. That's, <laughs> well, that's this highly complex treatment that turns a patient's own immune cells into, like, cancer-killing super fighters. An incredible technology. Yeah, it is. And combining them creates something profoundly different. We want you to walk away from this deep dive, really understanding the breakthrough, but also why this research makes things like early diagnosis more critical than ever. Okay, so before we get into, you know, guided missiles and instant factories, let's start with the big puzzle. Why, after all this progress with art, is an HIV cure still so hard to find? It all boils down to a game of cellular hide and seek. Okay. It's what scientists call viral latency. The problem is HIV doesn't just, you know, float around in your blood where drugs can get to it easily. It integrates its own genetic code right into the DNA of your immune cell. Right into our own cells. Right into your T cells. And when those cells are resting, the virus is effectively invisible. It's hiding. These infected resting cells build up in what we call reservoirs. And where are those? They're tucked away in tissues like in the lymph nodes, the gut, sometimes even the brain and bone marrow. Yeah. Deep inside the body. So RT, which is amazing at getting the viral load down to, you know, undetectable levels, it can't get to those reservoirs. What does that mean for a patient? It means lifelong treatment. What? RT is brilliant at stopping the virus from making new copies of itself, but it can't clear out these hidden latent cells. The second someone stops taking their medication, it all comes back. Those reservoir cells wake up, the virus starts replicating, and the viral load just shoots right back up. Yeah. We need something that can go in and specifically kill those sleeping infected cells. Okay, so that brings us to the first piece of the puzzle, mRNA. We all think of it for vaccines. So in a cure, what is its role? Is it still an instruction manual? It's absolutely an instruction manual, but for a much more complex job. Think of it like this. An mRNA molecule is a temporary blueprint. It tells your cells machinery to build a very specific protein. Right, for a vaccine, that's like a piece of the virus. Exactly, a viral spike protein, for instance. But for this kind of therapy, we can code for something much more targeted. We can use mRNA to deliver instructions that tell a person's own T cells to build a brand new receptor on their surface. A SAR receptor. A CAR receptor, yes. We're essentially turning the body into the manufacturing plant for its own cure. That's that's the pivot point, isn't it? So how do you actually get the mRNA to the right cells? I mean, the body is a complicated place. It is. And this is where the engineering is just, well, it's brilliant. This is why the COVID vaccine tech was so important. The mRNA is packaged inside these tiny fatty bubbles called lipid nanoparticles or LNPs. The same delivery system. The very same. They're like little delivery drones. And by tweaking the, uh, the formulation of these LNPs, scientists can guide them to deliver their mRNA cargo directly to the T cells they want to reprogram. So the T cell just takes it in. Takes in the blueprint, builds the CR receptor, and boom, it's been weaponized right there inside the body, in situ. Okay, that flows perfectly into the other half of this, CRRT. Now, this is already a huge success in oncology, right, for certain blood cancers. A massive success, yeah. For lymphomas, leukemias, it's a game changer. So can you walk us through the traditional lab-based CAR-T process, just so we can see what the mRNA approach is trying to solve? Sure. Traditionally, it's this incredibly complex and, uh, and long procedure. Mm -hmm. You have to take a patient's T cells out of their body. Okay. Ship them to a highly specialized lab. Then you use a disabled virus to genetically engineer them to insert the new CAR DNA. Then you have to grow those cells, expand them into billions. Billions, wow. And finally you infuse them back into the patient. It takes weeks, sometimes months. And what is that CAR receptor actually doing? The CAR is the chimeric antigen receptor. It's like a high-tech homing beacon for the T cell. Hmm. It's engineered to recognize one very specific protein on a target cell, like a protein on a cancer cell. 
So it's a guided missile. It's the perfect analogy. The T-cell sees that target, locks on, and just unleashes its full killing power. It seeks out and destroys every single cell with that target on it. So we have the blueprint delivery system with mRNA and the guided missile with CAR-RT. Let's connect the dots. What happens when you put them together? You bypass the entire multi-million dollar, months-long factory process. Just skip it entirely. You skip it. Instead of a lab in another state editing your cells, the mRNA tells the T-cells already inside you how to do it themselves. So the body literally becomes its own car RT factory. Its own rapid deployment factory almost instantly. This means the therapy could, in theory, be delivered with a simple injection. It turns a logistical nightmare into a streamlined procedure. And that has to have huge implications for cost and access. Oh, absolutely. That's the part that gets everyone so excited. Traditional car T can cost half a million dollars or more per patient. It's just not accessible for most of the world. Right. But if you can move the manufacturing inside the patient, if the only really complex part is making the mRNA itself, you open the door to making this kind of advanced personalized medicine affordable and available globally. That potential is just staggering. So let's bring it back to HIV. Why are these internally made CAR T cells better at clearing out those hidden reservoirs? Because they have a totally different job than ARC. ARC just stops the virus from copying itself. It plays defense. It plays defense. These CAR T cells, though, they're programmed to play offense. They actively hunt down and destroy any cell that shows a sign of HIV infection, including those resting T cells in the lymph nodes. The ones in the reservoir. The very ones. The goal is to shrink that reservoir down to nothing. Let's uh, let's ground this in reality for a second. Let's be. This isn't science fiction. What's the current research status? What are the studies telling us? We have a lot of data pointing in this direction. Several big academic labs are on this. Animal studies have already shown that T cells engineered in vivo inside the body with mRNA can dramatically lower the viral load. So it works in animals. Works in animals. And they're seeing these cells stick around and keep working. On top of that, even the old style, externally made HIV CAR or T cells have already shown in early human trials that they can eliminate a lot of infected cells. So there's proof of concept. There's a solid proof of concept. The bet is that the mRNA system will just supercharge those results and make it way more efficient. Okay, but whenever you talk about turning the immune system into an aggressive killer, you have to talk about safety. What are the big concerns? The main one, and this is true for all CAR T therapies, is something called cytokine release syndrome, or CRS. The cytokine storm. That's the one. When all these engineered T cells start killing a huge number of infected cells at once, they release this massive flood of inflammatory signals. It can cause high fevers, organ problems. It has to be managed very, very carefully. And what about durability? If the mRNA is temporary, do the CRT cells just fade away? That is the million dollar question right now. It's the critical challenge. Unlike the traditional method, which permanently changes the T cell's DNA, mRNA is transient. It degrades. So it's a temporary weapon. It is. So researchers are working on how to dose it, how to formulate the LNPs to make sure the CRT cells stick around long enough to do the job, maybe for years. Because if you miss even a tiny bit of the reservoir. Exactly. If it eliminates 99%, but that last 1% rebounds after the mRNA fades, you haven't found a cure. Durability is everything. This makes me think we should be really precise about what we mean by cure. There's a difference between a functional cure and a sterilizing cure. Right? Well, a vital distinction, yes. A functional cure would mean the reservoir is so small that a person can stop all their RT meds and their own enhanced immune system keeps the virus suppressed forever. So the virus is still there technically, but it's locked down. Locked down and harmless. No daily drugs needed. A sterilizing cure, on the other hand, is the holy grail. That means every last viral particle, every last infected cell is gone from the body, eradicated. And a functional cure would still be a revolution. A complete revolution for global health. So that's the future we're looking at. A life without daily meds, without the shadow of the virus. Absolutely. The virus is no longer just managed. It's gone, or at least permanently controlled. Think about it. No more long-term drug side effects, no more adherence issues, a huge reduction in stigma. It changes everything. But let's bring this back to today for someone listening. The science is moving fast, but what's the connection between this future cure and something like getting tested now? The connection is profound. It's all about priming the pump. A smaller, well-controlled viral reservoir today gives these future therapies a much smaller target to attack. So getting on treatment early helps. It helps immensely. If you're diagnosed late, 
that reservoir is bigger, it's more established, and it's going to be much harder for these guided missiles to clear out completely. Okay. And this is why we really emphasize early detection. Especially if you think you've had a recent exposure, you should look into HIV RNA testing. It detects the virus itself, not the antibodies, so it gives you the earliest possible detection. So the takeaway is taking control of your health now actually prepares you for the breakthroughs of tomorrow. Precisely. The sooner you know, the sooner you can get the virus suppressed and the better your chances are of benefiting from these next-gen therapies when they arrive. This has been incredible. This deep dive shows that this research, this uh, synergy between mRNA and CAR-RT is moving so much faster than I think most people realize. It really is. <laughs> and I want to leave you with one final thought about the scope of this. Mm -hmm. If this works, if we prove we can use an injection of mRNA to turn the body into its own high-tech drug factory, yeah. we are just talking about curing HIV. Right. It's a platform. It is a platform for decentralized, personalized medicine. You could apply this to autoimmune diseases, to other cancers, maybe even some genetic disorders. It completely changes the economics, making these advanced therapies accessible and affordable for everyone on a global scale. It's the democratization of medicine. It really could be. That is a truly revolutionary thought to end on. Stay informed, stay empowered, and thank you for joining us for this deep dive into the future of medicine. Mm -hmm.